Hey guys, welcome back to my garage. In this video, I'm gonna go over the compact uh, CNC5 lathe that I've been working on. I apologize for not getting a video out sooner, but I've been terribly busy both in my personal life and uh, work here in the shop. Um, anyway, I have been working on the CNC5. It's actually about done. I've run a test part on it already, but uh, I wanted to go over a few details with you one of which was the drive system that I ended up using. I ended up changing the pulleys on the stepper motors to uh, 20 tooth uh, pulleys. The pulleys on the screws are 40 tooth, so we have a two to one uh, ratio. So we're actually doubling the torque of the hybrid stepper motors, which is working out fine. Um, if it hits a hard stop, the drive will fault and uh, everything will stop. But I did that, uh, I originally had done a 40 tooth pulley for the Z-axis hybrid stepper, which worked. I had to put um, guide washers on the pulleys. I bought pulley stock and I machined them down to fit and then I had to put guide washers on it. You have to put a guide washer on one of the pulleys, otherwise the belt can walk off the pulleys and rub. And that's what was going on when I had two pulleys without guide washers. Anyway, when I went to the X-axis, I discovered that the X-axis is not uh, in line with uh, the motor and the the screw pulley. It's offset so that I couldn't use the uh, 40 tooth pulley on the motor on the x-axis. So I wanted to do this conversion with as little machining as possible so I opted for the 20 tooth uh, pulley on the x-axis and uh, that, that worked out fine. I went to a smaller MXL pulley, uh, it's a 22, so now we got two to one. So the rapids will get cut in half, that's not an issue on the small machine, but the torque from the motors will be doubled. Uh, again, the motors are, are relatively small. Um, I've already tested it, the motors, if, if it hits a hard stop, it stalls and we get a, a, a fault from the, uh, the hybrid stepper drive, so it's not damaging anything, it's not hurting anything. For consistency's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and replace this pulley with the 20 tooth pulley. That's what I used in the X axis. This worked well in the X axis, so I'm gonna just keep them the same. Again, I'm trying to create a recipe here of what works uh, for a, a good combination of parts to convert one of these compact five PC lathes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the new pulley on. Okay, there's that. And then uh, it's a matter of putting the correct belt. Now this belt will be um, too big. So I'll figure out which belt to put on there. And while I have it off, I wanted to show you the Hall Effect sensor. There's one on the X and the Z. I embedded a magnet on the screw pulley. So when the magnet comes around, um, now let me back up a little bit. I took the plate, I made a measurement from the edge of the motor mount to where about the center of the where the magnet will go and I transferred that to this plate. I drilled and tapped this plate for an eight millimeter by one millimeter thread for the, uh, the Hall Effect sensor. This is a Hall Effect switch. It's also uh, an NPN normally open. It would have been nicer to use a normally closed, but it doesn't matter. What uh, Centroid CNC12 is looking for is a change of the state of the input, and then it will set home. So basically, a machine is gonna jog to what we call marks. You're gonna take it to a preset uh, distance on the machine, put marks on it, and you will jog it to that to those marks, and then you will home it, and then what will happen is CNC12 will move will move the, uh, the carriage until it sees the uh, magnet pass in front of the X and Z Hall effect sensors, and then it'll call it home. It should be a very reliable way of setting the home position on the machine, which, uh, which is important to find the center line of the uh, spindle axis. So that covers the, uh, the Hall effect switch, and primarily these are just there for homing the machine, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get a belt on this and get it all bolted back up. I just wanted to show you both motors are the same. They both have Hall effect switches, just the X has the Hall effect switch on the top, and this one has it off to the side. It's just the way the, uh, the pulleys are arranged for each axis. Um, I've already gone over the, uh, the spindle motor that the customer supplied as a direct replacement for the original uh, AC uh, motor that was on it before, but now he has control over the spindle speed using uh, an Automation Direct GS1 VFD. Now, 
whatever you decide to do, I mean, VFDs are, you know, they're all programmed a little bit differently, but they all accomplish the same thing. That is allowing spindle control from the Acorn uh, motion controller. So you can vary the speed. Now I left the belt, I left the step pulleys on, I eliminated the counter shaft, so he still has three steps uh, of pulley uh, speeds that he could use on the spindle if he wanted to. Um, the type of work that he does, I don't think he's gonna need them. Um, but uh, anyway, it worked out well. Um, so anyway, I again, I kinda wanna do a walk around. I wanna show you the inside of the control cabin, explain a few things. It was a fairly straightforward build, but what I wanted to do with this one is if I ever did another one, I wanted to document the recipe, if you will, so that I could do another uh, Compact 5 CNC lathe, um, and I already know what things to, that I need to, to buy. Um, so anyway, let me get the back off of this thing and let you take a look, and we'll go over the, the uh, control cabinet. Okay, before I take the back off the machine, I wanted to show you this bulkhead connector that the ethernet cable plugs into from the CNC PC. Um, and then I've got a strain relief and I got it's basically a 110 volt machine. The GS1 uh, VFD that I use takes 110 volts in and it will uh, convert it to three phase output. And that's what we needed, but I wanted to show you this. The original fan, I reused it. I punched some holes in the back of the cabinet, put some aluminum screen there air goes in and it gets blown out of these three holes here to keep the uh, enclosure cool. That's about it for the back. Another thing I wanted to show is um, because of the GS1, I had to put a spacer on the back panel. This is brand new. This is a sheet aluminum and then this frame is made out of three quarter by three quarter aluminum square tube and I mitered the corners and I 3D printed an insert to pull the corners tight and hold it together and then I just pop riveted the back to this to this frame. So let's go ahead and get this uh, get this cover off so you can see the inside. Okay let me go over what we got here. Here's the GS1 VFD. This drives the spindle. This is a, a, a 24 volt um, power supply, uh, 10 amps. This, this is, provides the power for the uh, hybrid stepper motors, closed loop stepper motors. This right here is a 24 volt power supply. It provides the logic for the Centroid Acorn board. This is a 5 volt power supply. This provides the logic to the hybrid stepper drivers from Automation Technologies. This little relay right here is wired to the 10 volt uh, output of this VFD. So when the VFD comes on, it closes this relay. This relay is uh, in parallel with the fault output of, this, of the VFD. So if there's no power to the VFD, it will uh, provide a fault input to ACORN, so ACORN won't start, it'll show a spindle fault. The reason why I did that is because these, the contact is, uh, I believe it's only normally open on this GS1. If there's no power to it, there's no way to let the ACORN controller know that there's a spindle fault. So that's why this relay's here, and it is powered from the 10 volt signal out of this VFD. Um, it's provided from the VFD. I used a 12 volt relay and the 10 volts is more than enough to drive the small relay here. And again, these, uh, the contacts are just providing a fault signal to Acorn. This relay is called an e-stop relay. It's wired to Acorn's uh, RL1 relay, which is an e-stop, a fault relay. So if everything's good, the RL1 will close and energize this small relay. Now the 24 volts is coming out of this power supply going through the relay one, it's a, this is a double pole, double throw relay. So one pole is coming to one contact, the other is coming to the other contact, and then it feeds each one of these drives. So that if there's a fault, I can reset it. The only way I can reset these drives is by powering them down. So by cycling the e-stop, it will open and close this relay, which is what we call the e-stop relay. Again, 24 volts, through the drives is actually going through this first and then to the drives so that the e-stop relay can control it. Um, and then of course there's Acorn. 
And then here's the um, encoder input. I'll get you around to that side, the spindle side, to show you the encoder. I got an encoder from AutomationDirect.com and uh, wired it in. The back side here, this is the e-stop relay. This is a power on-off relay. And then the fuse is right there. I chose to put the fuse on the front, so if, there's, if the user needed to check fuses and he couldn't get easily to the back of the cabinet, he could just pull the fuse out and check it there. So that's an overview of the control cabinet. Of course, here's the two stepper drives for the uh, X and Z axis on the lathe. Coming off the back of that Ethernet bulkhead connector, this is just a short patch cable. Again, it is shielded, and you can tell that by the metal shielding around the Ethernet connector. And I've got a, a simple terminal block here. AC comes in, AC power goes up to the fuse, it goes over to the on-off switch, and then it comes back down, and we got switched AC terminal, which powers up the fan, and it also powers up the uh, also powers up our power supplies and brings the machine up. All right, so let's get around to the side, and I'll show you the uh, spindle side. Uh, here's the spindle drive side. I'm driving the spindle with uh, these three step pulleys, and then over here you'll see the uh, encoder pulley assembly. It's basically a 60 tooth uh, MXL spindle pulley and a 60 tooth pulley on the encoder, and then of course we've got an MXL belt here. Um, basically I bored this out, I bored this pulley out that was a nice uh, snug slip fit over the spindle, and then I used set screws to lock it down to the these teeth on the uh, spindle. And then of course here's the Automation Technologies encoder. This is a medium duty encoder. That is, it's designed to take this sort of a, a load, a pulley and a belt load. Um, there's not much there really of a load, but it, it's designed for that, and that's important. Uh, an, a lesser and expensive uh, encoder can't do this. You'd have to put up, some, put up some sort of jack shaft arrangement. Also, the nice thing of this particular encoder from AutomationDirect.com is you can buy the bracket, a mounting bracket, which worked out really well in this really tight spot. Um, it's a right angle bracket uh, that holds the encoder to the lathe and uh, made, made things quite a bit easier. It was a little bit of a challenge to drill the mounting holes uh, on the front here to secure it, but it, I managed to get it done. So that's the spindle side of things. Here's an overall shot of the machine. Here's the carriage assembly. Here you can see the hybrid stepper motor from Automation Technologies, Inc. You can also see the Hall Effect sensor. The reason for the Hall Effect sensors, both on the X and the Z axis, that you can just see over here on the, on the side, the reason behind using the Hall Effect sensors is that once you set up your tools, and if you have tools preset in dedicated holders and you mark them all, um, it's great for setting your tool offsets to, uh, to, the, spindle, to the spindle center line here. Okay, what I want to do here is as soon as CNC 12 boots up, I'm going to jog this axis over where these two lines line up, and then I'm going to tell CNC 12 to home the machine, and what it will do is it will start slowly turning, it'll start slowly turning the screw until that magnet passes in front of this Hall Effect sensor. This Hall Effect sensor is an NPN normally open sensor. Uh, it works just fine. It would have been a little better if it was normally closed, but it works just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and jog the, the cross slide back in the X positive direction, which is, I'm going to move it, jog it back in the X positive direction until the marks line up. Okay. CNC 12 is up. You can say, see it says machine home not set. Press cycle start to send machine to home position. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put you down to the uh, cross slide so you can see it home. Okay, you may not see too much movement, but these marks are pretty lined up. So now the next thing what will happen is that the screw is going to turn until that magnet passes in front of the Hall Effect switch. So I'm going to go ahead and home it now. Okay, it's already found it. So that's it. I mean, it, it's, it's done. I'm going to take you to the screen so you can see. I mean, I, cre I created a custom home program that actually tells it once you set, when, you run, when it runs the home program, to do this. 
And I'm going to do it. I'm going to go ahead and hit the reset home, and you'll get to watch here what it's doing. So it's basically moving. It's already homed, but it's basically moving the axis very slowly until that Hall effect sensor trips. And when it trips, then it's it's uh, it's satisfied. It's just looking for that signal on the input from the Hall effect switches from uh, X and Z. Let me go to the diagnostic screen, and I can show you there. Press Alt-I. These are the inputs that I'm using, 3 and 4. So when, those, when that state changes on 3 and on 4, CNC 12 sees it. When they change, it will go ahead and set the uh, home position for X and Z. Now right now you see them as green because the magnets are right in front of these uh, sensors. Let me jog the axis a little bit to get them off. There's three dropped off, and then there's four is dropped off, okay? So pay attention to three and four. I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset home, and then CNC 12 is gonna command the axis to move until these inputs trip. There, there's that one, there's the other one. So X move first and then Z. So it's, it's homed, it's very repeatable that way. And in fact, some of the larger MCO machines used uh, the Hall effect sensors on the uh, screw pulleys, and that's what gave me the idea to put them on on uh, this compact five CNC lathe. That's a demonstration of homing the machine. Let me show you the uh, the home program. I'm going to get out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the CNC. T directory. I'm going to go to CNCT home. Move X plus at three inches a minute until input four closes. So that's what that's what this does. M106 tells it to move in the proper direction until the input closes, and then M26 just sets uh, the axis to home. And in this case, it sets X home here. And then the same thing. M106 is for Z input three feed rate of three inches a minute until input three closes, and then M26 sets the Z home at that position. Now let's open up the, the wizard screens and take a look at those. Okay, I'm not using inputs one and two. Um, I could put mechanical switches on X and Z and have the machine home hit the mechanical switches and then hunt for that, that uh, Hall effect sensor input. It was real easy to put a, a mechanical switch on the z-axis but not so easy to put it on the x. So we opted to try homing to marks first. Okay, And then you'll note 3 and 4 say unused yet we're using them. Well we're not using them in the traditional sense. In the home program we're just using them to, sh to see inputs open and close. That's all we're doing. And CNC 12 is being told, look at inputs 3 and 4. When you see the, ch the state of those inputs change, go ahead and uh, set the X and Z home position. And then we got drive OK. That's for the um, hybrid drives. And then we got spindle OK. Um, drive OK is normally open because we're paralleling the outputs, the alarm outputs from the automation technologies drives into one input. Spindle OK, same thing, it's normally open. If uh, so either that relay closes or there's a contact closure from the automation direct GS1, then we'll get a spindle fault. And uh, let's see, well I'm not using input 7 so I'm going to change this to unused, doesn't need to be used. And then we got the e-stop OK and it's normally closed. And then over here on outputs, um, no fault output, well that's the output relay number one and we're using that. I don't have lube so I can go ahead and set that to uh, output 2 as it's unused. Don't use a spindle break. I'm going to set that to unused as well. Do a little housekeeping cleanup here. 
Spindle forward, spindle reverse, we use that. Drive reset, we use drive reset for the, uh, the VFD to reset it. Not using flood, so I'm gonna set that one to uh, output seven, unused, and I'm not using a clamp, so I'm gonna set that to output eight, unused. And, oh, one thing I didn't mention that my custom home program if I write and I'm gonna have to write this it's gonna overwrite that custom home program however I created a backup of that that CNC T dot uh, HOM file in a subdirectory and we'll just put it right back so I'm gonna go ahead and write these and save it all right so that's all cleaned up now now I'll go to axis configuration whoops okay Axis configuration. All right, right out of the box, those automation technologies uh, drives have 1,000 line encoder and quadrature is 4,000. So steps per revolution is 4,000, okay? Overall turns ratio, I've already fine tuned this and verified it. Um, there is a process for it. Um, I will post a link in the description below. I've also done a video on setting that up. You can rough it in and then you can fine tune it with a dial indicator. Lash compensation, I've set that up on this machine. I got six tenths on Z and I got about uh, a thou and two tenths on X. I set that up. My max rate, I've set it to 100 on both axes. And uh, no, I'm sorry, I set it to 100 on Z, but I have it set to 60 on X. And then the slow jog. Um, Okay, made a little minor change here. So I set the slow jog on Z to 20, and I set the, the uh, slow jog on X to 10, should be fine. Excel, decel, I've got them at um, 0.5 right now. Um, there was no need to reverse any directions of the motors. And then down here, where it says home to switch, but I'm actually home into marks. And then you go a little bit further. The soft limits are set up. I'll be tw changing this 12 and a half inches in the negative direction. I'm gonna account for the tail stock in place and then I'm gonna shorten that up. I think the tail stock is 70 millimeters wide. And then here's X, which is two inches in the negative direction or towards spindle center line, okay? Um, so that's that. Let's go to spindle setup. All right, I have a spindle setup. 4,000 max, we're trying, we're testing this out on this machine. Um, the automation technologies has been tuned to drive the spindle at 4,000 RPM max and 400 minimum. That's in the, the uh, belt range that's closest to one to one. There is a spindle encoder and it's negative, the spindle encoder count is 2,000 and in quadrature it's 8,000 and I had to put that negative because it runs normally counterclockwise not doing rigid tapping high range is always one and then I went ahead and set up the other steps uh, on the pulleys so that in the virtual control panel there's high speed medium speed and low speed so you can just push those buttons and you'll get an accurate reading and control from CNC 12 all right, lathe orientation, well it's a horizontal lathe and the tool post is in the front. Uh, touch screen, yes. USB keys, no. Virtual control panel, yes. Uh, we do have a wireless uh, MPG, I believe. I have to set that up yet, which it's just a matter of flipping this to yes and you have to have the pro license to use the Centroid wireless MPG. MPG performance quick response. Uh, this just sets the configuration menu password and jogging options at startup sets to continuous. Um, th didn't use anything in the advanced axis configuration and nothing in the DB25 signal mapping. I'm gonna write these changes. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and put my backup home file back into the CNC T directory because it overwrote it with a default. So I have a, just, folder here called home file and all I do is I copy that I go back to CNCT and then I basically paste it replace the file all right now let me take a quick look 
and that's the correct file. All right, so that's that's an overview of the machine. Um, let me fire it up here. Because I made a change in the in the wizard, it says a change was detected in the PLC program. CNC control board requires a power cycle. Failure of power cycle could lead to unpredictable results. Please close CNC 12 and then power off Acorn board and power it back up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That's the right thing to do. So we hit F10 to exit. And I'm going to go ahead and power down the machine. And for giggles and grins, I'm going to go ahead and restart the computer. I'm going to power the machine back up. It's so using an Intel Nook. It's got a solid state drive. It boots pretty quickly. Intel Nooks are pretty, pretty neat little computers. This Intel Nook was purchased directly from Centroid, so they already had the software on it. Okay, let's start up CNC 12 lathe. Now it says press cycle start to send machine to home position. Well, I'll show you. The inputs are already set, so it's still holding. So what it'll do when I set home, it's going to see the signals already on those inputs and it's going to go ahead and set home. I hit Alt-D to show you where machine home position is, so that's that's set up, okay? Let me swing you back around to the machine. Okay, the last job I ran was the pawn. And I'm going to go ahead and run it again. I'm going to set my feed rate way low. Got it to about 20%. So it's saying, um, please change the tool number one, press cycle start to continue. I'm going to hit cycle start. And the space bar will also pause the machine. Let me show you. I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit the space bar, and it pauses the machine. So you can stop the machine, kind of check things over, and then you hit cycle start. Okay, it's running the pawn part now. And I've still got the feed rate override set way down. And I've got my finger on the space bar here. Okay, that was the first pass, that went good. I'm gonna go ahead and set the feed rate over right up a little bit. About up to 60%, still got my finger on the space bar. I'm gonna go to 100%. You can see the uh, rapids at uh, 100 inches a minute working pretty well here. I don't think I'd push this machine much faster than that. Set you up to the control. That's actual spindle speed right there coming off the encoder.
Here's those buds I was telling you about, spindle low, spindle medium, spindle high, and that's where we're at right now, spindle high. Take you back to the machine. And there it is, all finished. All right. So that's an overview of the uh, compact 5PC lathe, uh, all fitted up and uh, operating under Centroid CNC 12 control, Acorn, and the hybrid stepper drives from AutomationTechnologiesInc.com. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm, I'll show you one more video of the machine cutting material uh, here pretty soon, but uh, it's just about wrapped up and ready to go back to its owner. All right, take care, talk to you soon.